Hello everyone, it's Melinda, and today we're going to be looking at my tiny little collection of Zircon and Udialite. And you'll find out a little bit later why I've decided to group these two together. They're certainly different minerals, um, but they have a little connection. So we'll start with Zircon. Zircon is a mineral belonging to a group of nesosilicates. Its chemical name is Zirconium silicate. Uh, zircon forms in silicate melts with large proportions of high field strength incompatible elements. For example, hafnium is almost always present in quantities ranging from 1 to 4%. Uh, the natural color of zircon varies between colorless, yellow, um, yellow golden, red, brown, blue, and green. So quite a variety. Um, my first specimen is a zircon from Malawi, Africa, and it certainly does have a red tinge to it. So gorgeous and quite large for a zircon. Um, <clears throat> so large zircons are very rare. Their average size in granite rocks is about uh, 0.1 to 0.3 millimeters, super small. But they can also grow to sizes of several centimeters, especially in mafic pegmatites and carbonatites. Uh, zircon is also very resistant to heat and corrosion. So because of their uranium and thorium content, uh, some zircons undergo metamictization <laughs> sorry uh, connected to internal radiation damage these processes partially disrupt the crystal structure and partly explain the high variable properties of zircon as zircon becomes more and more modified by internal radiation damage the density decreases the crystal structure is compromised and the color changes very interesting um, Australia leads the world in zircon mining, producing 37% uh, of the world's production. South Africa is Africa's main producer, with 30% of the world's production, uh, second after Australia. Very, very neat. So, zircon has played um, an important role during the evolution of radiometric dating. Uh, zircons contain trace amounts of uranium and thorium and can be dated using several modern analytical techniques. Because zircons uh, can survive geologic processes like erosion, transport, even high-grade metamorphism, they contain a rich and varied record of geological processes. Um, <clears throat> so that makes them pretty neat. And around here uh, in Ontario, uh, they certainly are present. I would say they're not, you know, extremely abundant and common by any means. And I, I don't believe I've found one yet. Um, I do have this that is from a, an Ontario rock farm that could possibly uh, be small zircons in matrix. It would be uh, from an Ontario location uh, where very similar looking specimens come from. And certainly the shape of the crystals and color of the crystals is quite similar to what's been documented for Ontario zircons. But I, you know, I don't like to say for sure unless I know for sure, so. I thought I'd show this one just because it's possible, but I will, you know, readily admit that I am not 100% certain that they are zircons. What do you guys think? <laughs> if you're from the area and you know zircons, let me know. A few local um, rock hunters thought that they could be, but, you know. That's tough to tell. Awesome. So lastly, I'm going to show you my beautiful cabochon of Udialite. And the Udialite is in Matrix. And it was purchased from Sona Tona Gemstones, one of my favorite uh, crystal sellers. They sell cabochons and um, faceted and cut stones as well that isn't that gorgeous oh just love it 
then so the red crystals would be the UV light crystals. Stunning! Oh, can't get enough. So UV light, whose name derives from the Greek phrase eudialytos, meaning well decomposable, is a somewhat rare nine-member ring cyclosilicate mineral which forms an alkaline igneous rock such as nepheline cyanites. Its name alludes to its um, ready solubility in acid, well decomposed, is what its name means in Greek. And again, it's because it uh, dissolves very easily in acid. <laughs> So eudialite is used as a minor ore of zirconium. That's why I decided to uh, pair it up with zircon for this video. It is not a zircon, but uh, it does contain zirconium. So that's very interesting. Uh, another use of eudialite is a minor, um, sorry, is as a minor gemstone, but this use is limited by its rarity, uh, which is compounded by its poor crystal habit. So as you can see, uh, it is much more common to find them in matrix like this. This is very much indicative of what you'll find on the market. Um, and that's because of its poor crystal habit. So these factors make UD light of primary interest as a collector's mineral, um, such as, you know, you and I. Uh, UD light typically has a significant content of rare earth elements. Uh, because of this, geoscientists used... Um, Eudialite as a geochronometer to date and investigate uh, the genesis of the host rocks. So again, very, very similar to zircons. It can be used in the same way. Yeah. Isn't that fascinating? I love it. I wanted to add one of these to my collection for a while. They, they can be, uh, you know, difficult to find. Love it. All right, everyone, there are my zircons and my UDA light specimen. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for stopping by. See you next time.